The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory. Russell actually flat right now, but you have the S&Ps up about seven points. We're seven points in the positive, but we're 30 points above where we were trading at at about 4 a.m. Eastern Time. We're right now trading up seven in the S&Ps. That's almost two tenths percent in the positive. Nasdaq 100. We catch a bit off the lows. We had a 14,000 handle yesterday in the afternoon. We got down to 14,937 overnight. We're trading at 15,087, up by four tenths percent. Dow up by 24 points right now in the Russell. Flat as I mentioned. Crude pulling back a bit. We were down in the 85s. We're trading down 87 cents right now to 86.40. You jump over to the gold contract, a little bit of volatility, but pretty much chopping around near the highs. We're up to 1975 yesterday. We're down to almost 1950. We're trading at 1965, technically down almost $3 in the session for gold. We got to talk about yields. We got to talk about yields, even though we're getting quite a spike right now. I think 4.98 is the number. Maybe somebody in the den has it. What was our high yield print there? Did we get above 4.98? I think that was the high. 4.98, you talk about it, man. Right up against that level in the 10-year. Sorry, just one moment as I jump around. And, I mean, it's not that long ago yesterday, man. What were we pushing? Yeah, yesterday, I mean, imagine on yesterday's program, right? We're flirting with 106.03, something like that. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after the first break at 9.15. We're talking about yields. We're at 106.03. You almost lost 20 ticks to 105.12. We get a little bit of a spike. We have some jobless claims data. The economy continues to be strong to say what you can. And there's your jump even on the two-year a bit. But, man, mammoth moves right now when you're talking about it. Let's see where we are right now, as I mentioned. Taking a look at those yield curves. Yeah, so the 10-year pairing it to 4.93. So I think we got up to 4.98, the yield on the 10-year. Pretty remarkable, man. You take a look at the longer-term trend on the 10-year. We were talking about the upper boundary line of this channel line not that long ago, man, at 108. Can't believe you're talking about basically 105, and we got within 10 or 12 ticks of that price level. So you might be approaching an area that maybe we get a little bit of a reprieve, even in a downward trend channel, downward channel. We just traded from 108 to almost 105 in the 10-year, and you're talking about over a period of one week. <sighs> Mammoth moves, to put it lightly. All right, what else do we got? Let's jump around to some of the equities with their numbers, and you jump around, and some big numbers for Netflix last night. And Look at this thing charging higher. We're up $56 right now. We're trading at 400 bucks. And remember... Let's back it up a little more. This thing was down to 162. We're going to open at 400. Now, it's been quite a little bit of a pullback here. Let's take this Fibonacci number off there. And just on this pullback recently, let's start it right here. And you're talking about a high of 453 back in the week of September 4th. So you had a high of 453. This thing's given up over $100 since the beginning of September, right? Remarkable. Now let's just look on a Fibonacci basis. And man, we're gonna open above the 50% of that entire move. I guess so. You're talking about a $100 move, $106 move. Netflix right now trading up $54 on their numbers. You jump around um, to their numbers. Well, just absolutely substantial in terms of the number of ads they have, the free cash flow they have. That's being made easier by the fact that they have a strike going on. They're not producing as many films. That'll come back to get them in the later years. But nonetheless, man, the sharing the passwords is a real deal. Uh, I think we all could have clued into that one, and that's going to continue going forward. Now, on the flip side of that, Tesla. 
So much for our channel line looking for an example trade going higher yesterday. Not the case as Tesla jumps higher and now jumps lower, excuse me, and now they jump out of that channel line. And you're talking about opening right now at about 227 on this chart is where you're talking about. You look at the 10 minute chart, five minute, 227, you're down to 224. And yeah, jumping over to Tesla. So they're going to start making cyber trucks at the end of this year. Tesla's uh, Elon's Elon's got promises for the future. They miss the profit and sales estimates and margin are going to margins are going to be the focus. Yeah, Cybertruck is starting at the end of this year, getting down. There it is, margins. I mean, look at the first quarter of last year, and their margins are cut in half, and they're below anything that they've seen basically since the beginning of 2019. Yeah. Automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credits slumped to 16.3% in the quarter, the lowest in over to four years. The market was looking for 17.7. Okay, so there's the big one. It's a percentage and a half below on margins, and it's probably going even lower. They are on a different quest right now to gain economies of scale. And I imagine it's going to face some weight today because you're still at a pretty lofty level, man. You're still at a company right now. It's valued at $720 billion. So you're dealing with some lofty multiples, to put it lightly. But nonetheless, you've got markets in positive territory with the S&Ps up by nine right now. Jumping around to what else I had pulled up. Jobless claims this morning, 198,000. The market reacting to this number a little bit in the last 45 minutes, trading a little bit higher. Labor market remains hot. Continuing claims rising to 1.73 million is the number there. And yeah, I mean, look at these trends, right? Continuing, you can see a little bit of an uptick, but on an initial jobless claims front, man, we have, you could make the case been trending lower outside of a couple spikes almost since March. We were chopping around between 225 and 250 for February through May. You got a spike and then the decline. But we're seeing numbers that we hadn't seen since inflation was almost peaking, which is remarkable. When you're talking about 198,000, retail sales 0.7%, right? Uh, and you're going to see Chairman Powell talking today. So he has a conversation with, uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name of Bloomberg. Maybe somebody in the den will help me out. But we'll see what he has to say, man. Yields are going to be in focus, and they have a Fed meeting less than two weeks away. So Chairman Powell will be out there talking. S&P is up by nine right now. NASDAQ up by 74. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks this morning. You're going to have Apple shares opening up by about 50 cents to the positive right now, catching a lift recently in the last, yeah, really off that initial jobless games number, man. The market liking that number. Not exactly sure why when it's indicative of a hot economy as usual, but nonetheless, weekly jobless claims under 200,000. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hanks. we got markets in positive territory. S&P trading right at 43.50. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures positive by eight points, trading at 43.50. To talk about some of the action this morning, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network Fast Market, right here on Tiger TV at 12 o'clock with Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network. They got some great guests. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. If you haven't watched the show yet, and I'm sure you may have, but check it out every day. We're coming into earnings season. And Kevin Hinks, we almost got that 5% number on the 10-year yields in focus yet again this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, it's a big number. It's a big number because, you know, traders are human beings, and they see big numbers, and that should, you know, bring in a lot of two-sided two paper um, in, in bond markets. So, yeah, it's, it's a big number worth watching as we inch close to it here. We're still a little bit of ways away, 493 on the 10-year, but inching ever closer, Tommy, and more more economic data, jobless claims now below 200,000 jobs at 198,000. Incredibly, incredible strength of first-time filers for unemployment insurance, Tommy. And what did you think, Kevin, of the reaction from that? You said it well, 198,000. Man, this economy is just uh, relentlessly strong. 198,000. You look at it on a chart. We're talking about lower numbers coming at you on an initial jobless claims number, at least. The continuing going up a bit. But the market sees that and trades up by 10 points. It's great for the economy. But it's interesting how sometimes we get numbers and the market gets a little worried because that's part of the yield conversation, of course, that yields are going higher. Inflation is still there. And other times it trades higher. What do you think of just that interpretation of, of the number we got this morning? You know, jobless claims used to be – it's a weekly number. It's a high-frequency data point that we get. It used to be not as important – not as big of a market mover as it is today, Tommy. And now the market moves off this number every Thursday morning. So it's as important now as any others. And, you know, it's, Tommy, it's when we, it, I think the most important thing that we get is the entirety of the data, which means theme or his phrase they used he's really not getting it and so these numbers are coming in remember uh a strong labor market leads to higher wages higher wages means to more disposable income more disposable income leads to more retail sales 
stronger overall market. And, and, and Tommy, that's what rates are reacting to, frankly. And the Fed, the, you know, the Fed's not here buying bonds. They're actually selling bonds. They're lightening their um, their balance sheet. So it, th- there's a lot of pressures on the bond market r- r- right now, Tommy. And the Fed's not there to really uh, change change that at least right now, right? Some event. Remember when the uh, when the when the regional bank problem happened in March? The Fed bought bonds in that. So, yeah, I, I think what we're seeing with interest rates in the overall market, they, they don't mind 5%. They don't like how fast it's gone there. Tommy, last Friday, the yields were 4.63. Now they're 4 nine. That is too fast. It has been a rip-roaring rally for the week. I have it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. And, man, since May as well, quite the channel to, the, to down lower prices, higher yield, of course, on that 10-year. And, yeah, I go back to March, Kevin, just because you were mentioning it. I have it up here on a daily chart going back 12 months, just looking at the 10-year futures. And they were trading during March at 111, and they're at 105.20. And that's where the banking crisis began, right? When when we had the 10-year trading at 111, we're solid five points below that, even though you got that acceleration like you talked about all the way up to 117. And then, man, we've given it up. With that in mind, we got some earnings numbers. Hey, what did you think of Tesla and the margins? Some tough margins for Tesla, man, and they're trading lower this morning. Well, we knew Tesla was going to have lower margins, right? Elon Musk has been ratcheting down prices, and he talked about it in his conference call. He talked about the macro conditions are stormy, and he's worried about the affordability of the cars. That's why he keeps bringing down prices, because higher interest rates are affecting people's ability. Now, he's navigating these waters, but it's bumpy out there. Yeah. Now, he said the macro conditions are stormy, but Tesla is a capable ship, and the Cybertruck release is good news for Tesla finally, but this, you know, he's playing a much longer game. He's got to get these cars, in his opinion, he's got to get them affordable to everyday Americans, and when he does, that he's going to, you know, Tommy, here's the stat that I said uh, yesterday on Fast Market. They sold, in the first half of the year, they sold 325,000 cars. If you add the 19 other EV makers together, he beat all of them combined in terms of sales. So he's so dominant, and he keeps pressing his advantage by lowering prices. I think Elon Musk is playing a game of chess when a lot of the EV other makers are playing checkers, Tommy. I think he's way, way ahead of the game here. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see it play out in EV. Um, they're all trying to play catch up right now. Like you said, uh, interesting volatility for Tesla, and we'll see how we go on the open, as we know. With that in mind, we go forward, Kevin. Do you guys have some equities that you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Think about the payment space is what we're doing today. We're going to trade Visa. Like Foley is going to talk about American Express, and then we'll trade PayPal in the last segment. So all about electronic payments today, Tommy. Visa, American Express, and PayPal. I like it. Kevin, <clears throat> excuse me. I appreciate the time as always, man. We don't talk to you tomorrow. We'll talk to you on Tuesday, but have a great day. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk to you next week, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. Fast Market from the Schwab Network right here at 12 o'clock today. And you heard it. They're talking some payment processors. Visa. American Express and PayPal. Taking a look at Visa, right? I was looking at this thing the other day. Check it out. You talk about relentless pressure to the upside, man. You come into COVID at 200, you drive down to 140, you make that high at 252, and we're pushing those highs yet again. You peak out before the market, as in the market peaked out, recall, at the end of 2021, right? You have the tech stocks just charging higher in the final quarter of the year. But many equities peaked earlier that year and had rolled over already. Uh, Amazon, Disney, that's way earlier, right? But check out Amazon, right? Amazon peaks out actually in July of 2021. You had a rollover in Disney earlier in the year, 203. That thing straight down to COVID lows of 84 bucks, but nonetheless, Visa. Uh, 252 down to 180. And just like that, man, you are up. What is that off of those lows? Be pushing 240 at 60 bucks, yeah, 33 percent almost from the lows, and you're pushing those recent highs at 252 for Visa, American Express. Different story, right? You're actually below where you came into COVID, 1638. It's been quite a pullback for American Express. Oh no, that's not American Express. Excuse me. That's American Express. What am I doing?
Maybe somebody can help me out in the den. I'm having a brain fart. All right, well, I'm going to get saved by the break. Even better. Amex, yeah. What's going on with my symbols? No? All right, we'll jump to PayPal. AXP, thank you, of course. There we go. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, not not much the same. 199, you're back to 153. And you're just above the COVIDs, but you haven't got the same acceleration Visa has this year to test those recent those highs that you made back in 2022 from American Express. And then PayPal, total different story, right? Check out that. 310, down to $56 for PayPal. Well below where you came into COVID. Some of these equities, man, how did that happen? There's your five-year weekly, though. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the market open. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. We get the S&P positive by four points on the open, trading at 43.48. We get the NASDAQ 100 up by 64. Dow barely in the red right now, 33,801. And we got the Russell. Check that out, right? When we had the markets in the positive, I mentioned the Russell was basically flat in the red. We're now negative by 11 points, man. You got some real weakness. Check out the move just from Tuesday. What's that? 60 points, more than a 3% pullback in the Russell from where we were at the highs of Tuesday. S&Ps open up positive by about six. 
Let's check in on Tesla. Tesla shares down about $15. You're off by 6.3%. We jump over to Netflix. They spiked to 408.95. We're back to 400. We check out some of the FANG stocks. Apple shares up by a third of a percent this morning. We jump over to Amazon. There's a bid for you. What's going on with Amazon shares? They get a little bit of an upgrade. Oppenheimer reiterates and outperform on Amazon, maintains a 170 price target. Something like that. Record prime-like event. You know, I had some things. Did you buy some Amazon products on their big deal days? I had some things in my cart. Didn't pull the trigger. Didn't do it. They didn't get me. They didn't get me. Uh, but what's interesting was I had them in the cart, and then they're still in the cart so I can look at the price. And some of them did, did go up a decent amount, where there actually was a pretty substantial deal on some of the products I was considering buying. Nonetheless, Amazon up by 2.2% right there. We jump around. Disney shares up a bit. Warner Brothers Discovery. Up by seven tenths percent. We jump to some of the streamers to see on the the Netflix heels. Paramount up about one tenth percent. When we jump over to Netflix, yes, they're taking a little bit of profit today. Still up by forty seven bucks. But boy, you just gave up fifteen bucks from that spike of four oh nine. We're at four ninety three right now. We jump over to Tesla, and they're sitting right where we open right now, down about fourteen dollars. Taking a look at the five-year ladder. We talk about this, right? This morning, 5.17. Interesting. that You really don't jump around that much on the five-year ladder as much as you see on the yields, of course, on something like the 10-year. Because the longer you go out in duration, right, the more exposure you have. The cool part about the five-year ladder, which is why I bring it up, is you get exposure to the one-year, two-year, three-year, four-year, and five-year. Well, the one-year is not moving right now. You're getting about 5.5% because they're pretty sure that rates are going to be high for the next 6 or 12 months, right? The 2 years pretty close to that price level even considering right now as well. But you get out to the 3, 4, and the 5, that's where you get a little bit of movement. Nonetheless, you're still talking about it. I'm hearing friends in my group chat, right, who are very bright individuals, live in Brooklyn actually, work in marketing, um, and – so they're not in finance, but they're a marketing professional professional who manages their own portfolio. And they're talking about their parents. And they're talking about saying, I got to get my parents into some of this free yield, right? I mean, I got I to gotta park at least like 20%. And I thought even 20% depending. Now, they're still working, okay? But saying I should be parking 20% in this free 5 plus percent yield. And it's very real, especially on that end of the spectrum in terms of retirement, retirement goals, conservative nature, aggressive nature. And like I've mentioned before, okay, I am right now 43 years old. I got to pause and do the math on that, unfortunately. Uh, and yeah, I have most of my 401k and growth stocks. Okay, so longer term, yes, even at 5%, there's an opportunity on a longer term basis. I did the comparison a couple days ago or yesterday. You do that five year ladder. You compare it to the S&P, that's like locking in 5,600 in the S&P risk-free right now in five years. There's a very real chance that S&P is above 5,600 in five years, okay? I'm betting on it, actually, by having my 401k money in growth stocks, etc. But when you talk about risk-free rate of return, I mean, there's, there's, we were talking to Teddy Kegstad about it yesterday, right? Haven't seen this in a long time, so pay attention to that one, man. Because that's going to be a headwind for this market at these yields. And the higher they go, the more of a headwind it is. And it's kind of a double whammy in terms of presenting an alternative for the market at the same time that these companies are going to be facing pressure from higher yield, higher cost of capital, et cetera. All right. Speaking of yields, we jump to this piece from the journal. And it's talking about the correlation. This one's out early this morning. All right. I was reading it before the program. This is the correlation, okay, of returns for the S&P 500 and long-term treasury bonds. And that's a problem when they're correlated, when you are diversifying between a mix of equities and fixed income. Okay, the 60-40 investing strategy just had the worst year in generations. Higher, higher interest rates and inflation are upending millions of Americans' retirement planning. Wall Street's boilerplate mix of stock and bonds isn't cutting it anymore. <clears throat> it's... It's fascinating when you look at it in this direction, okay? Now, they have a correlation of the returns of the S&P 500 and long-term treasury bonds. 
The higher this is, assets are moving together. The lower that is, assets are moving in the opposite direction. And oh, I got to sign in. I am a member. I was reading it this morning. Um, all right, I'll sign in. We'll go over that one after the break. I don't know why it kicks me out sometimes. Shame on you, Journal. Let me see if I can click a couple buttons real quick. Two. Okay, there we go. We're back in, just like that. <clears throat> the beauty of Google, saving all your passwords. Um, they go over the numbers, of course. Down 14% from the highs of 2021. That's a diversified portfolio, man. Down 14% from the highs of 2021. Annual return for a portfolio in 60% stocks, 40% bonds. Yeah, you were down almost 20%. You're up 6.7% this year, but you're still down over a two-year period, right? Talking about 13 14%. Now, the kicker here is that might be about to change because it's not often you go from an environment of 0% yields. Who was locking in? The, the tough part about this, okay, is that the 60-40 portfolio mix was probably not a great mix when rates got down to where they were, right? Long-term, held to maturity U.S. Treasuries, probably not a good thing to park all your money in as a bank when rates got where they were. We reached an exacerbated point in rates. We were already near the lower boundary line when we came into the pandemic, Rates crashed to try and stimulate economy, the economy during the beginning of the pandemic and then as we started to come out of it. And then what happened? We ripped higher as inflation roared and it was a once in a generation, you could say, move in those yields. So we are now back at a point that it's pretty cool that you're guaranteed a 5% rate of return on that money if you hold through duration, okay? That's why if you buy a five-year CD right now at 4.9%, which is about what a five-year CD can lock you in at. I think the five-year U.S. Treasury is just under, let's see what it is, just under 5%, I think, the five-year. Five years at 4.95. Here, let's take a look. I just pull up CNBC for the yield curve, man. It gives you every date of it. If you're looking for this, you folks, you just go into markets and go to bonds. On the CNBC homepage, you can see the entire yield curve, what they're pushing out there. The 10-year, 4.93. The five-year, 4.95. Now, CDs will probably catch up. That's where you're basically getting their CD. I think the CD is 4.9 right now. You hold that through duration, through expiration, you're getting that interest rate. No problem. Okay? And that's where things vary in terms of the ability to lose money. It's not happening right now at 5% if you hold. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should 
should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Well, welcome back, folks. We got markets giving up the gains just like that. We got the S and P's back to flat red territory. Nasdaq 100 back to flat to red territory. We drop about 100 points right there, and the Nasdaq 100 just shy of that level. What did we get up to? We spiked on that 9:30 about a 15,109. So we give up about 80 points, 15,029 right now. And you're coming into right where we were at about 3:30 in the morning before you got a little bit of a sell-off. Same area in the S and P's. Coming into that area of about 43.40. And that's kind of the area you spiked to yesterday. You did get, you know, 10 minutes below that price level. You made that huge acceleration down to 43.30 right towards the end of the day. Got a little bit of a bounce into the close. We're coming right back into that area right now at 43.41. You have Powell speaking at noon Eastern time. Always the potential for something. He's probably not looking to shock the markets, but it is interesting what's going on with yields right now. The tenure inching closer to 5%. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what he has to say. Excuse me. All right, jumping around. So check out this one just from an AI perspective. If you haven't tried out ChatGPT, folks, just try it out to understand what's going on. Play with it in terms of seeing the type of results that it can yield. And I think it allows you, by using it, to better understand how game-changing this technology can be. Now, OpenAI is in talks to sell shares at an $86 billion valuation. It's not about millions anymore, right? It's about billions. So that, that's a number that isn't too surprising considering how they've taken shape and taken the AI whole sector by storm. $86 billion, and that's going to jump them right ahead of Stripe, Sheen, to become one of the world's most valuable, closely held companies. Now remember, Microsoft owns 49% of this company, okay? They're on track to generate a billion dollars in annual revenue as businesses adopt the technology. I imagine that is going to have an exponential growth rate in terms of how they're able to capitalize on this myself. Now the cool part, right? So, I mean, this is how you just, so much cash, man. You don't have to go back far, folks. You're talking about going back to January, okay? Microsoft said in January it's making a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment in OpenAI, okay? They invested $3 billion in OpenAI, and I think the deal is $10 billion, right? And they got 49%. I was trying to figure this out, right? Yeah, a year later. So they've been in. Yeah. $29 billion, okay? OpenAI is in talks to complete a deal in which it would sell existing shares in a so-called tender. $29 billion is what it valued the company at, and right now it's at $86 billion. This is from January of this year. Now, things have gone pretty well for this company since then. 
but it is pretty staggering how Microsoft got in. They invest ten billion dollars, and um, I thought it said in this one. I'm pretty sure it was forty nine percent. There it is. Yeah, forty nine percent owner. Pretty remarkable the returns that you got on that. Uh, so they're remaining private, and why not? Because they're a private company that's fifty percent owned by Microsoft. So. That's quite an asterisk to be a private company owned 50% by Microsoft, nonetheless. All right, what else do we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talked yields, we talked Tesla, we talked Netflix, jumping around to what I have. Yeah, we talked our 60-40 portfolio. All right, let's jump around and see how some of these fag stocks take a look at some commodities. Take a look at Amazon as they get a lift on a little bit of an upgrade, up by 2% right now for Amazon. We jump over to the retailers. Walmart down about two, two tenths percent. Target share is positive by two tenths percent right now. We jump to Apple, positive by two tenths percent. Speaking of Microsoft, they're up by a full percentage this morning. NASDAQ 100, barely in the green, man, by 15 points right now. We get the Russell off by eight. We jump to the gold contract. Hanging tough, man. 1966, that gold contract talking about dollar strength check out the dollar down to 106.29 and we're just chopping around right you have the run from 99 dollars almost 100 we'll call it up to 107 and we've just been chopping around in this area basically for about three weeks we got into this area september 26th and we chop at about 106.30 we keep our eye on the tenure yeah the tenure sitting in 105.21 I mean, the moves have been so mammoth. I imagine this market might settle out a bit as we come into the 12 noon time frame for Chairman Powell. I mean, they go into the quiet period pretty soon, man. They got a, a meeting 13 days from right now. So you're going to have Chairman Powell at 12 noon, and we'll see if he makes any headlines. It's only about a one out of three chance in terms of probability that they hike priced into the market right now. So it would be surprising if he said something to counter that narrative. We'll see if he does, though. Yeah, jumping back to Tesla, taking a look at the margins. I mean, you're talking about margins sinking from 30% down to 16.3%. I love Kevin's analysis when we talked to him at 9.15 a.m. this morning. If you didn't catch it live on the program folks everything we do is archived right under the tfnn page on youtube just search tfnn you can find all the videos we do there and he was talking about the amount of cars that they produced in the first half of the year versus every other ev maker and they're going for much bigger than that though because the amount of cars that they produce compared to the amount of cars that the big car companies actually produce it's not even close and so they need to reach some economies of scale and this has the market a little worried and it should because that's a trajectory to lower prices. Now, here's the other side of that, man. Tesla has a raw deal in that Tesla has transparency in their prices, okay? We all know that you see a sticker price for the car that's really not the, the price that they're willing to sell it at, right? That's not the case with Tesla. Tesla has the exact price posted on their website that you can buy those vehicles at, which is why the whole world finds out when they make a price change, okay? Other car companies are potentially facing waning demand, which is part of the reason that they are lowering prices, okay, to push out more supply. And other car companies are facing that as well. We've seen some of those prices come down on the CPI, even used in particular. But they don't have to post those prices. You don't see the price change posted on their website readily available. What do you see? You see the sticker price that really isn't changing, but maybe they're giving you more rebates. They're doing something. So other car companies are facing that as well. Tesla's the, the poster boy because they literally have to put it on a poster on their website, which is how they operate in business. But that is a trajectory that brings margins to much lower prices. And I don't know why you would think they would be done raising prices just yet when it's been quite a rip-roaring race to lower prices. And Elon's talking about how hard it is to afford a car with higher yields. And what do we got? We have higher yields remaining, coming at you. So it is a tough one. So as my dad says many times on his program, right, it's it's what's your signature worth, right, which is the interest rate related. What is your signature worth? We're seeing a play out for houses. Your signature worth so much less in terms of being able to afford a monthly payment for an automobile, for a car, 
or for a house because interest rates are higher and that pushes that payment higher in terms of buying the same amount of asset. All right, folks, stay tuned. One more segment, S&Ps, basically positive by one. We're coming back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by two right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 38. The Dow rolls over to negative territory off by seven. The Russell off by 10. Russell been particularly volatile. Speaking of volatility, we jump over to the VIX this morning. Got to above 20 just towards the close yesterday. We were over that area overnight. We're sitting at 1927 right now for the volatility index. We check back in on Tesla. Off about $18, you're off by 7.5% for Tesla shares. On the flip side of that, you jump over to Netflix, $400. Up 54 bucks or 15.6% for Netflix shares. Quite the resurgent, resurgence and quite the subscriber growth that they have coming back. Password sharing. That's going to pay dividends, no pun intended, for some time. As I'm sure there's many people that eventually are going to get on that Netflix recurring revenue chain that weren't quite on it. All right, we check back in on yields. We got Chairman Powell speaking at 12 o'clock today. So keep 12 o'clock on your radar about two hours from right now. He'll be talking, and we'll see if he makes any headlines, to put it lightly, right? Let's check back in on Amazon. They were trading up about 2%. Yeah, holding on to those gains. Amazon up by 2% on the dot. 
up two dollars and fifty six cents. They get an upgrade from Oppenheimer, I believe, pushing a one seventy price target for Amazon as they catch a lift. We check back in on some of the banks. JP Morgan up by four tenths percent. Morgan Stanley quite a day yesterday, man. Today. Yeah, already given up some of the gains, up by 7 tenths percent. Goldman Sachs was trading lower yesterday. They claw back some of those, up by 8 tenths percent right now. We check out the airlines. United up by 1.3. American, they catch a little bit of a lift on their numbers, up by 3.5 percent. We jump over to Delta shares, positive by about 3 tenths percent. And just like that, we got some red on the board as I go off the air. 43-41, the day is young, as our man Basil Chapman would say. He's coming up next, folks, for the Tiger Technicians Hour, live right here on Tiger TV at 10 o'clock. We got our man Steve Rhodes coming up at 11. I got to do it in my head. Fast Market at 12. Larry Pesimento live at 1 o'clock. Yeah, so Basil's up at 10, folks. Steve Rhodes live at 11. Fast Market at 12. Larry Pesimento live at 1 o'clock. My dad, he's back, folks. My dad is back from vacation. He's ready to go. He's live for 3 till 4 today. Don't miss it. The Tom O'Brien Show. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow morning, folks. Thanks so much.